Hello, YouTube. <laughs> oh, you're going to love this one today. Luigi here. We are going to take a look at the creation of Adam, a painting on the Sistine Chapel ceiling done by Michelangelo or Michelangelo Lodovico Bonarotti Simone. That's his full name. We just call him Michelangelo Bonarotti or Michelangelo Michael Angelo. Okay, Michelangelo did this great work in, uh, I got it written down here somewhere, 1511 to 1512. He lived from 1475 to 1564. Uh, and uh, he's one of my personal favorites. He truly was a Renaissance man. He was a great painter. He was a great sculptor. He was a great architect. Michelangelo. Okay, what are we looking at? This is the restored version of the creation of Adam. Here we see God the Father about to impart the spark of life into Adam's finger, thus animating him and making him alive. Adam being, as depicted in Genesis, the first man. Now, I know this is the restored version because the colors are so vibrant. And you will ask, and rightly so, hey Luigi, if it's restored, what are all these cracks doing in the wall? Well, let's talk about that. Those ain't cracks the way you think of them. This is a fresco, as we say in America, or a fresco, as they would have said in Florence, in Rome. A fresco, what does that mean? Fresco means fresh. They only put on as much plaster on the wall as they could paint very quickly before the plaster dried. Why? This is a technique where they apply pigment, watercolors, to the plaster as it's wet. And as the plaster dries, the plaster sucks the pigment into the plaster, making it integral part of the plaster, as opposed to just color laying on top of the plaster, lying on top of the plaster. Pardon me for not using the right intransitive verb, lying on top of the plaster. So here we have, you can see what the painting is, and we're not going to talk about the painting as much as we're going to talk about what was going on in the world during these years, the age of reason, the renaissance, the rebirth, the renaissance. Keep your eye on this and watch this. What's going on here? Michelangelo would have been an expert anatomist. He stole cadavers in order to study anatomy. This is why his musculature in both his paintings and his sculptures are so beautifully correct, because he understood the body. By the way, Leonardo did the same thing. Had they been caught stealing bodies, they would have been not only excommunicated, but probably executed as well. This is a no-no. So watch this shape here. On the left, you see a brain and a brain stem and the medulla oblongata, and all those other cool things. Look what we see here behind God the Father. A section through the brain, along with the brain stem. Do you think this is an accident? Of course not. What could Michelangelo be telling us with this? Remember, the church controlled every facet of life with its authoritarian stuff. The earth is flat. It is a geocentric universe, uh, not a heliocentric solar system. They almost killed Galileo for saying the Earth revolves around the sun. I mean, try to imagine the amount of control the church had on everyday life. And then what happens? There's this renaissance, this rebirth, this renaissance of thinking, the age of science and reason is starting to crowd out the age of faith. It's unfortunate that... Science has declared war on faith because the two can live compatibly together. There's no, there's really no contradiction there. And I'll talk a bit about more of that later. But this is typical of a statement that Michelangelo might have been trying to say. He said, you know, I'm a good Catholic. I'll draw, I'll paint God creating Adam. But I'm also going to show the power of a man's brain, reason, science. And he embeds God the Father in this section through a cranial cavity for all to see. And you can look, these cherubs, their arms, their shoulders, their legs, their limbs, all they, they all smash together to emulate the brain matter. Look at it. 
Look how close this is. This is no accident. This is no mere coincidence. This is very deliberate on Michelangelo. And how many other anatomists were there in the 16th century? Well, not many. So he knew this would only be discovered centuries later as science continued to progress. Look at this. Look at this. If <laughs> Look at this. I'm so into this. Okay. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about science and, and faith. Science is the study of the observable universe. Wow, science is the study of, the ob of observable phenomena. And yes, with Hubble telescopes and with electron microscopes, that which we call observable has gotten so much bigger and so much smaller. I mean, the observable phenomena in the universe is it's just, you know, it, it, it's got to be growing exponentially every single day. There's so much stuff out there. Religion is the realm of faith. Religion is the realm of inner personal spiritual experience. The two realms, science and religion, don't even overlap. So I can't really understand the war, the constant war between scientists and religionists. They should be able to, to live compatibly, at least with a lot less hostility than they do now. All right, people, here you have it. Think hard on this picture. You've seen it a billion times before, but you didn't know what you were looking at. Good old Michelangelo, one of my personal favorites. All right, everybody. All right. God bless you. I love you all. Think about this one a while. Take good care. Bye-bye.